Welcome to Naval Warfare Analysis. Uh, today we're going to go over approach and attack nuclear submarine uh, versus one-on-one -on -one targeting. Uh, this is a very basic textbook approach. Um, this will work no matter what submarine you have, whether it's nuclear powered, conventional, or otherwise. Uh, I'm going to teach you how to get within engagement envelope of, uh, of your target. That's going to, and that will depend on your target uh, type and performance, and then how to evade the torpedo launch uh, should he counterfire on you. Uh, we're starting off the scenario with a uh, 688-class submarine, uses Baltimore here. Target is uh, 17 nautical miles to the south. Uh, we do not have detection at this time, so you're uh, seeing parts of the, uh, of the engagement that the player does not see. We're going to go ahead and continue on course until we have detection. All right, at 16 nautical miles, uh, USS Baltimore does get passive broadband detection of a submerged target. Initially, we don't know what course and speed he's on, but within a minute, we know that our closure rate is 24 knots. And his course is north-ish. He's headed north, and his speed's about 20 knots. So we know that uh, with our speed of five knots and his speed of 20 knots between the two of us, uh, because we're not directly pointing nose to nose, our closure rate is uh, 24 knots closure here. So I know that he's doing 20 knots. He's at transit speed. He's not doing a good sonar search, although he is certainly trying. Uh, but we know that we can get pretty close to him without him hearing us if he stays at 20 knots. This is where the performance of your target matters. We know the alpha, which is our target today, does not have a good sonar system. It's very fast, it's very light, very small, very nimble. It has a lot of advantages over us, but the sonar detection range is our advantage. So we have him now at 15.9 nautical miles to the south, transiting at 20 knots. We do not change depth course or speed. We want to get an idea for uh, if he's going to maneuver. We also want to lock in his course a little bit tighter. We just know that he's heading north. Turns out his course is actually 005. So he's just five degrees off from north at this time. We're now 10 minutes into the engagement. He's 14 nautical miles away and we hear him slow down. He slows down to five knots, does not change course yet. And he's doing a sonar search now. This is why we wanted to stay at our current depth and speed in case he did a maneuver like this. Our closure rate is only nine knots right now, much slower. It's about half uh, or a little bit more than less than half than it was a few minutes ago. Okay, at time 12, uh, we're at 17 or 13.9 uh, nautical miles away right now. He begins conducting baffle clears. He's doing uh, circles. Um, in the movie, Hunt for October called him Crazy Ivans. Uh, he's just going to be clearing the area around him because the Alpha does not have a toad array. He'll, he's going to be listening with his hull-mounted, bow-mounted sonar system, but he has to physically turn the submarine to search all 360 degrees around. So that's what he's doing right now. We're watching him do this as he closes us at 14 knots. Here you can see the target doing his baffle clear. So his depth is, um, 270 feet. He is above the layer right now. The layer is about 300 feet. Baltimore continues to close. Range is now 13.7 nautical miles. Okay, at time 19, uh, his baffle clear is complete and he's going to speed back up to 20 knots. Uh, range now is 13.9 uh, nautical miles again because we were both headed south at the approximately the same speed. So there wasn't much change in range over the past few minutes. So now he turns back to base course, which is north-ish or 005, speeds back up to 20 knots, and now closure is uh, back to 24 knots. Okay, Baltimore's down here at uh, doing five knots, course uh, 179, uh, depth is 570 feet. We are below the layer, uh, so is the target at this time. The target is going deep, to just past 700 feet, closing us at uh, 24 knots. At range 13 nautical miles is when I decide that I'm gonna take a shot 
So we want to maneuver ourselves into weapons envelope. Weapons envelope for the Alpha is very tricky because she can make 41 nautical miles an hour. Our Mark 48 ad cap in this game can only do 50. So there is a minimum closure rate of nine knots. If we're uh, both on the same course and they're heading away from us, we're only going to close nine knots. Our weapon runtime is only 24 minutes. So that means that if they start at a flank bell and our weapon starts at a, its best speed, we're only going to have about four nautical miles uh, of closure over the next 24 minutes. So we want to be somewhere in the vicinity of four nautical miles uh, to shoot if we're at parity. So if I shoot at four nautical miles, we're probably going to get shot. So we can't have that. We need to figure out a course and a range in which we can engage and survive his re-engagement or his counterfire and still give our Mark 48 uh, a chance to hit. And that's what, that's what we're trying to figure out right now. So we're going to close a little bit more here and then I'm going to come to course and come to, come to a uh, firing course. So I'm still at five knots. He's still at 20 knots. We're just closing range to uh, 7.4 nautical miles. I've decided that on this course, 179, I'm going to shoot at seven nautical miles because if he stays at 20 knots, he will not hear our torpedo till it's inside that uh, four nautical mile range and probably much closer. I'm estimating uh, one and a half to two nautical miles, which will give our fuel, our, our torpedo, enough fuel to uh, catch the submarine. So that's the plan right now. The K316, the Alpha decides to go shallow and we lose track. He's above the layer, we're below the layer. He slowed down to five knots, we're at five knots. So he's uh, above the layer again, getting ready to conduct a baffle clear. I continue to close to eight nautical miles here. So here you can see the contact is conducting his baffle clear. He's turning away from us, doing a circle again, a crazy Ivan. And uh, because his speed is very close to ours, our closure rate is actually a negative two uh, as he goes in the opposite direction. And then he's going to continue the circle, come back towards us. We have zero knots of closure. Now he's continuing his baffle clear, coming back towards us. Okay, the alpha right now is at periscope depth. This is a great place to engage the target. We're only eight nautical miles away. I want to be seven nautical miles whenever I shoot. So here I am, uh, seven nautical miles away, closing at five knots. Uh, closure because of his speed towards us is a total of eight knots. I'm getting ready to go to firing point procedures here in just a few minutes, simply waiting on range to close. Okay, so the target has completed its baffle clear and its periscope depth trip, and we did not regain the target, or the target faded after he dove again from PD. So I've been deciding that even though we're within seven nautical miles, I'm going to go ahead and go below the layer as well to regain target, to regain track before I fire. We're now well within seven nautical miles. It's almost down to six, much closer than I intend to be on shooting, but this will be better for the torpedo. We're on depth now. I have sped up to 10 knots. Our depth is three, four, zero feet just below the layer. His depth is seven, three, zero feet uh, deep, much, much deeper than, than we are. I do, I shoot one Mark 48 at this course in depth. Our current course is 174. Our speed is 10 knots. Our depth is three, four, zero feet. Closure rate is 28 knots at 5.6 nautical miles. The Mark 48 will have more than enough fuel at this range to uh, close and kill the contact because he's back to two zero knots. And our weapon's coming in. Uh, we'll start tracking the weapon here. All right, here's the Mark 48 torpedo closing. It is passively tracking the submarine right now. At this point, we could go to full evasion, 
but I'm doing what's called a covert evasion, uh, staying on depth in our current evasion course. So a note about coming to um, coming to course 175. That was a course that was good for closure and pretty good for evasion. It really depended on at what bearing will the contact gain the Mark 48 at approximately two nautical miles distance. Torpedo continues to close. It's only 2.5 nautical miles away right now from K316. K316 is deep right down there. Okay, here you can see the torpedo is closing. The contact is alerted at this range. It was about uh, 1, 1 1.6 nautical miles. Contact alerted and began evading, launching countermeasures. Here you can see the, tor um, the, the target has counterfired multiple set 65 torpedoes at us, at the incoming fire, not at us. Our Mark 48 is closing him on the left-hand side. So he's doing, you know, a wide fan of three torpedoes in the direction of the Mark 48. This is why the initial bearing of the Mark 48 detection is so important. Because look at the bearing offset. Let's pause it right here. From the K316 perspective, the Mark 48 was bearing, you know, somewhere to the north. Our actual bearing is about 15 to 20 degrees off that. Because that 15 to 20 degrees is six nautical miles away, that's gonna give us a chance to evade these incoming torpedoes. I'm not on the optimal course, but I'm on a good course for evasion at this point. I'm still only doing 10 knots as well. Let's go ahead and unpause. So here we can see K316 is evading. Our torpedo is conducting a search for him. He's also dispensed countermeasures that we don't see on this replay. The torpedo has required the submarine and is adjusting track down to him. You can see the dotted line right there. That's the torpedo adjusting track to uh, K316. K316 realizes that he's being tracked again. He does a second evasion, turning to starboard. Torpedo has really good track at this point and is now maneuvered to an interception course because the Alpha is at full speed, speeding up to 41 knots. He's passing 28 knots, 30 knots right now. Torpedo is continuously recalculating the intercept point for his to, to match his speed. And here we are at time five. Torpedo merges on bearing of the Alpha. And we have one dead Alpha has been destroyed. Now, we still have the counterfire coming at us, so we're gonna shift track to the torpedoes. So we can see on this course, uh, one torpedo has a chance to uh, engage us, so I speed up to a head flank. And we drive ourselves out of the window of these engaging torpedoes. We don't have to do a course change. All we had to do was speed up. So all three of these torpedoes will be conducting a, a fan search going past us. Uh, the closure rate is 22 knots. That's a little bit high, but because we have um, a good offset and a good course, uh, I continue to stay on this course. All right, and that's the end of the engagement right there. All three of these torpedoes do miss. Uh, this was a good engagement course and speed to go on. Uh, a thing to note is whenever you fire, you already want to be on your evasion course. So you want to close the contact on a closure course to get within weapon weapons envelope. So the weapon has enough fuel to hit the target, even though the target may be alerted and evaded. That's how we got within seven nautical miles. I calculated the seven nautical miles based on the alpha's sonar performance at 20 knots, which I knew was very poor. I gave him the benefit of two nautical miles detection. It ended up being one and a half. Because of only two nautical mile detection on our weapon, we were able to close to within six nautical miles and engage. That's how we got him. The way we evaded was 
after we lost the wire, there was no restriction on ship speed to maintain a wire on the weapon to control the weapon. So I was able to increase speed to a head flank and drive out of the weapon performance envelope of the set 65s uh, coming to the north. All right, I hope this was uh, clear and beneficial to you. Uh, you've learned a little bit about approach and attack. You've learned uh, terms like closest point of approach, weapon envelope, uh, the firing point, and then evasion. Uh, evasion courses and uh, closure courses are two different courses, but if you can get those to be close to each other, that's benefit. You've learned about engagement range. Uh, your target determines at what point you can engage it in terms of range. And I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, everybody.